welcome to the Digital Amateur Television Experimenters Night. This is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania. Amateur radio is a worldwide hobby that has many different aspects. Digital television is just one of the many modes and areas that are covered. Maybe you're interested in becoming involved in the DATV Experimenters Nights. Do you realise that you do not have to be a radio amateur or need any ATV equipment to participate anywhere in the world? Also participate in the night by coming up to the Queen's Domain Club Rooms. Yes, right on top of the Queen's Domain in the Heritage Listed Coast Wireless Station. You never know, we might get you in front of the camera or behind doing one of the many roles during the night. We get underway with our program on a Wednesday night from 7.30pm local time. We'll see you soon. This is VK7 OTC. Okay, this is uh, VK7 uh, OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV Experimenters Night. And uh, I've got, uh, we've got a, uh, a full and quite diverse um, program tonight, so, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll get underway um, in many, many different um, aspects of electronics and radio and, and all sorts of things. Now, I'll, I'll just make an apology to start with. I, I, I don't really like doing that, but I'll just make an apology to uh, start with because we don't, um, <laughs> we don't uh, have our, um, our close-up camera um, which we uh, we usually have here because um, last week the uh, the, be a bit hot. the power supply oh that might be the level out there you'd need to turn it down out there um, uh, the um, um, the power supply um, uh, the power supply failed on the close-up camera uh, unit so uh, fortunately we have a spare. <laughs> Um, so I, uh, I am digging that out and getting that up and going. So, uh, so yeah, we have um, also um, did a little bit of audio rearrangement during the week. Uh, so we have uh, dual control of both what goes to RF and what goes to streaming. So um, I'm looking at the streaming right at the moment. If, if somebody could let me know on the streaming whether the audio is a bit too hot or not uh, that would be really good um, it has been a little bit hot um, as in uh, a little bit high in level the last few times and I've been able to I can now independently control those levels so uh, so I'm hoping that the uh, the audio is a little bit a little bit better um, in uh, quality um and i'll just put a i'm monitoring the uh, the streaming uh, the streaming here um so if somebody could let me know on the uh, on the stream whether uh, the audio is uh, is okay from a level and quality point of view that would be fantastic okay um now um also monitoring uh repeater 2 just uh, switch that on um now i might get um I might get Richard into uh, into the studio. <laughs> Richard, 
Richard, calling Mr. Richard. <laughs> okay. Um, this is... Uh, no, no, that's all right. Um, we were just... Uh, yeah, um, go ahead, Ron. Go ahead, Ron. VK7 RM, VK7 uh, OTC. Okay, Justin, the audio sounds uh, a lot uh, overdriven and uh, a bit echoey, so I just thought I'd comment on that one. Okay, I've just um, I've just taken it down a level. Just um, okay. How's uh, how's that a little bit lower there? Uh, uh, now, hang on. Let me um, let me just do this a slightly different way. How's that? <laughs> that's a bit better. How's that, uh, Ron? Yeah, that's better. Probably still a bit uh, a bit higher than what I had it set previously, uh, Justin. Okay, uh, how's that, Ron? Uh, just dropped it down a little bit, a uh, little bit more. Over. That sounds pretty good now. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Ron. Um, nothing like doing um, real time. <laughs> real time. Uh, uh, now, if I go to. That's a bit better. And I welcome Richard VK Seven ZBX into the studio. How are you going? Oh, I'm very well. Excellent. 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 Now the reason Richard's here is we had a field day on the weekend. We had a field day. Didn't we have a field day? <laughs> now Richard and Murray were trying out the van. The van, the field day truck. And how did it go? Looked really well. Okay. Really well. Okay. Um we weren't cold on that one. <laughs> Bloody great. Well, I, I have included as part of our for our <laughs> RF viewers later on. I have included the um, um, the um, Hayden's VK Seven HHs summary of the crazy. field day. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Um, and I did I did note that Murray did show the heater. Yes. <laughs> yes. Look, that was all part of it. Um, the generator worked exceptionally well, but look, the, the, the heater was good. In fact, we got to the point where, look, I went prepared because I've worked in cold stuff before, so I had thermals on. Okay. I didn't care about no heater. We were going up 1,100 metres in in the winter. Okay. Yeah. So I wore thermals, and and in the end, I'm saying, Murray, can you turn the heater down? As I'm sitting in the sun, it's like, dude, it's too hot. <laughs> but... It, and Murray does tend to have it up fairly young. Yeah, if anyone that's ever been in Murray's <laughs> office will attest to the fact it's like going to, the, to warm bar, but. Yeah. Um, but it really paid dividends at the end because okay. when we packed up, it was dark. And yeah. it was windy. And we didn't have a thermometer, but we it took us about four goes to pack up. Okay, because and you had to warm your yeah, hands up. Yeah, we had to warm the hands up. And, and after the third time, after 15 minutes of our hands in front of it, Fire, we're going, yeah, this is really cold. <laughs> so then the pack up strategy sort of basically sort of um, developed into a just tie all the stuff on the roof and we'll worry about the stuff in the van later. So it was like, get everything down, get it all secured and close it all. Hang on, check those cables in, close it all. Right. Okay. So, um, okay. Look, it was really good. Look, no, no. Um, the, look, Murray did a fan, like I've got to say, Murray did a fantastic job of. Um, he fitted most of the stuff on the van yep. on Friday at my place while I was uh, in Beaconsfield until we worked. <laughs> it's a bit sad. That work thing gets that in the way. Damn yeah. work thing, yeah. <laughs> um, so he, did, he fitted all that. Okay. And then he made some really nice, I, don't, I, don't know, I haven't got any pictures, but I think Murray has, of, of the cabinets that he made uh, to sit the radios in. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. And some slide out using some um, um, dumpster dived mm. um, rack rails. Yep. Okay. With some MDF that we could set our laptops and stuff on. Yep. Um, even my wife contributed. She made a cushion that I sat on the, the battery pack over in the corner. So oh I my sit God. On was, okay. Comfort. Look, it was really good. We we had visions of trying to do some fancy audio routing. Okay. But um, we didn't. Okay. No, no. Uh, time, but next time we discovered that just by having the radios were sort of um, in in the middle of us, 
uh, and we just basically found the body each wearing a pair of headphones. Yep. I would work people on these two bands on one radio. Yep. Then I'd say to Murray, I'd make a note of who was on there, and I'd just go, you want to work these guys? Yes, we, we just swap headphones, swap microphones. Ah, oh, okay, so that's how you did it. So, so, and we that's just... nice. And we sort of kept the... We had the, uh, an 817, two 817, well, 817 and 818. Yep. And they were set up permanently on uh, 10 gigs. Okay. And on, as it turned out, 2.4. We were going to have 2.4 and 3.4. Yeah, Let's okay. Let's not talk about, about 3.4. Yeah, right? no. So it was the idea, and, and we did actually have a, a little, an 8900, a quad band FM, okay. which we were going to have just on the FM channel, so we could sort of listen to everything. Yeah, but, okay. Um, some person whose show my name was forgot to bring the Omni antenna for that, so that really didn't. Right, okay. Work. Hayden helped us out of Lentis. Moving on. One, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but look, it, it worked really, really well. Um, and probably the, the, the hardest thing was um, the acoustics were probably a little bit close yeah, between and, of and I can attest to that because yeah. I actually heard who, you know, Murray when yeah. I was contacting yeah. you and, and you I could knew who we were both working. Correct. Yeah. So, but uh, but there know. was also a, there was also yeah. a, 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 a third operator in the van, and it was called the air compressor. Oh yes, actually that features in Hayden's video. Yeah, because yeah. he, Hayden goes, "What the hell's that?" Because <laughs> when we first sort of played with the van and the mast. Yep. You basically turn this thing on, it makes a hell of a racket, and the mask goes up, and then, yep. you, then you lock it off, and it's like, oh. So after like 20 minutes, half an hour, because the seals are a bit dodge on the yep. mask, yep. it comes down, so the compressor comes on. So, ah, oh, once every 20 minutes, we can, we can work with that. However, when there's a whole bunch of antennas on it, and it's windy... It tends it to come down a bit more. every minute. So. <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. And okay. It's, it's a fairly old compressor, and it's mounted on a fairly flimsy bit of tin and it's in its own little sort of um, speaker enclosure. <laughs> <laughs> Amplification enclosure. So, yes. uh, so we, we, we had a look at the fittings and, and it's got some quick connect fittings so okay. it'll be Put outside. up on the mountain. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But look, that was the only thing but I think maybe yeah. even if okay. we look at you know, sort of noise cancelling microphones perhaps. Yep. Um, okay. But look, end of the day, wouldn't it? So it was all a bit of an experiment. This was the first outing with the band. It was, yes. In yes. anger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it sounds like it went went pretty well. It went really well. Um, the fact that in the winter field day, if, again, if you watch the two videos, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a significant difference. Yeah, um, I know, well, truly. Um, Inside versus outside. For a start. <laughs> for sure. And, look, I think um, we learned a lot about... about um, antennas and, and how to put them and feed line links and things and okay. hopefully next time we'll have a bit more of a plan of where antennas are going to go and we'll have the feed lines cut to the right length Okay. Um, and we'll have uh, the other microwave bands yep. set up and, and we'll get there early and we'll do some tests especially with the guys up north uh, yep. Peter and Co yeah, and, yeah. We'll, and we'll do the optimum alignment Okay. and then we can like either you know, mark the tripods or mark whatever and have it locked off so that we know when there's a sked time we can go, okay, yep, we can just call the guys rather than like, oh, let's go out and turn things around. And and, and see if they're there. Yeah. That, so. That's And even like somewhere like where you went, it's a bit unusual, maybe do a bit of experimenting early so that... Well, yeah. see, so, <laughs> I, I thought about this. It's actually the same problem as what we had when I was down at Eagle Hawk Neck. Because, that's right. <laughs> because... If you, I was down at Eagle Hawk Neck, you would have had to have gone to the other, literally the other, almost the other I side of the road. I saw the road, yeah. Um, which is just plain dangerous um, <laughs> for a start. Um, but it, it, where I was at New Norfolk, and in, in fact, that's a that's a good that's a good segue. Good segue. Because um, uh, Richard, Richard and I did try to work on ten gigs. Um, we had ten gigs um, at both ends. Richard was set up for PD. For uh, the for the north, they were at White Hills, so and I couldn't work out why why we couldn't make the contact because literally um, the distance to me was like nineteen kilometres, yep. and the distance to the north was like one hundred and fifty five. Yeah. yeah, so <laughs> I'm sort of thinking, and you made the contact with the north, but we we had absolutely no hope of of making the contact in in over nineteen kilometres. No. Then I work out why. Now we don't, um, as I mentioned earlier, we don't actually have our um, our close up uh, our close up camera rod at the moment because 
the um, power supply shut itself. So, <laughs> well, it's a technical term. <laughs> well, I couldn't. It's funny enough. I couldn't work out what the noise was because there's, there's this buzzing noise every so often, and just and I went, "Where's that coming from? Where's that coming from?" Then I realised that the LEDs are going on and off at the rate of the buzzing noise, um, ah, <laughs> and then it problem. stopped altogether. <laughs> so, but uh, we do actually have uh, we we've got two of those. So I've got the other one out. I just need to clean it up. So uh, next time we'll have the the um, the close up camera. But what I've actually done is just to give you an idea, and I'll, I'll get Richard to hold that up. And what I will do is. Stay there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Now. Oh. Okay, now. If we go to there, okay. So just zoom in just a little bit more. Now, if I get my pencil. <laughs> we have this, this is very technical. We have Tasmania. A bit like a we, we <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, <laughs> I just had an interesting image. Um, there's Richard up here, which is Mount Wellington. So I've marked that on the map using Google Earth. Then there is PD up here at White Hills, and then there is over here off to the side at me, uh, me at New Nor New Norfolk. So I was on the Peppermint Hill uh, lookout, um, uh, which is just above uh, New Norfolk, where all of the um, the Telstra Towers are, if you've been to New Norfolk. But you'll notice, um, now Richard was set up for PD, and when we look at, here, I'll change that to here. <laughs> seamless, next, next slide. seamless changeover. <laughs> um, when we do the path, which is a really nice feature on Google Earth, um, this is the path over 19 kilometres between me, way down here, and you can see the difference in elevation, uh, to Richard, who was up here, over 19 kilometres. Now, if you put a ruler from here to here, the only thing that really you worry about here is this little hill in the middle here. And I sort of went, hmm, well, that's a bit strange. Why isn't that, uh, why didn't we make the contact? Versus, this is between Mount Wellington, and you can see the takeoff from Mount Wellington drops dramatically mm -hmm. all the way down to Peter over here at White Hills. And this is uh, Coin Mountain. This is Coin Mountain, um, right in the centre of Tasmania. And if you do a ruler from there to there, that's in the way. But the big advantage here is you've got a fantastic takeoff straight into hopefully a duct mm. um, uh, or some. Uh, in the wind, uh, yes. uh, correct, correct. But now this was the successful path versus this. Now, so okay, when you. When you look at our previous previous one here, um, you notice that that's quite a bit di of a difference in direction <laughs> to me. Yeah. Um, and given the uh, those dishes are um, two degrees, one to two degrees, um, you really need to be pointed in the right direction. That's right. However, <laughs> however, right. now what we'll do is turn that one over. <laughs> what I then did was have a little bit closer look at right up here, right next to where Richard was. And when you, you've got this really nice elevation arrangement on Google Earth where you can actually come down to as if you're at the location looking in the direction uh, that you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. And if you do that with the path marked, what it really, there's a really nice feature with Google Earth because where that line, that path line, goes through something, it actually makes the line disappear. Yep. And you'll notice it's disappeared right near yeah. Richard. Yeah. And then over here, this is down here, that's the Lost World, yep. for those people who know the Lost World. And then it disappears, there's a hill just above the Lost World where it would have had to have gone through. And that's probably not good. Just a bit of attenuation there. So even if you were pointing in the right direction, I have a feeling that we probably would have had to have increased altitude by correct to get over those two hills right at the beginning. So, <laughs> so anyway, that's um that's a bit of analysis of um, paths on ten gigs. So anyway, that's uh 
<laughs> that's why we didn't make 10 gigs. But um, now talking about 10 gigs, um, that, uh, in fact, I'll leave that like it is. Sorry, we're looking at you very, but we're not, that's, that's, okay. that's to air. That's to air. Um, <laughs> we're um, talking about 10 gigs. So general impressions of the, the contest. Um, we made the, the contact on 10 gigs to, to Peter and Andrew. Um, and would have got lots of points, I suspect. Yeah, look, I think it was 1,100 points per contact, which was really good. Yeah. Um, it was amazing, because we, we ended up... Well, I sent a, a, um, a signal first to, for Peter to lock on, because I had 30 watts and he's got three. Yeah. Um, but then he, he sort of um, picked up on my signal, and then I just sort of did the same when he transmitted. Yeah. And by, you know, a degree or so made the difference between... Still, like, you know, five and one to, like, yep, five and nine... Yeah. Um, there you so, go. But it's that's that's the tricky thing is if if you're just working one particular station, you can peak up. You can have the luxury and go okay, and you can even on your compass you can go yep, peaked him up at you know two hundred and ninety one degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which of course when you're doing the, like the summer field day where you're trying to work random people, yep. you've got to like try and do a bit of research and go oh okay, I'm trying to work you know VK three blah and he's here and VK five is here. And, and on 10 gigs, you can't just really sort of have a random conversation. Correct. It's it's a bit more... It's now, VKCL does actually give you the... The heading. The heading. Yeah. The I think it does it, obviously, on the centre of each grid square. So, but that would be certainly near enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for, for distance. For, for Peter, that would have been enough, mm, I reckon. Yeah. At, at least to give you yeah. a signal so you can... And, of course, like on. the 600 mil dishes are not, are not too bad. Obviously, mm. as you get bigger dishes, you get sort of smaller yeah. beam widths, but... Um, oh, okay. But the, the grids on 2.4 gig, they, they worked really well. They weren't quite as broad, but we were, we were a, a true 5 or 9 on 2.4 gigs. Yeah, okay, okay. So, okay. which was really good. And, and 2.4 gigs, the multiplier is still, I think it's 3 three or 4, I think, is the multiplier yeah. for memory. Something yeah, look, like the that. contact, the, the, even, like all the contact, even on 2 metres, I can't remember the exact points. I didn't bring, I was going to bring the sheet in, but I think it was 50 or 60 points on... You know, six metres and sort yep. of progressively went up. Um, but look, you know, I looked at a few. I worked um, Roger HRW on, yep. on, um, yeah, yeah. on 23 centimetres. And I think, like he was in Brighton, and, and that was only, in fact, he was in the same grid square as what I'd normally sort of reside in. Yeah. And I think that was point, that contact was worth 90 yeah. something points on 23 centimetres. And ditto for me. You know, so, so. so to me, that's, it's great to have the long contacts. Because that's like that's all part of the good fun. Yeah. But in a contest point of view, you just need lots of people. Yeah. You need, you know, you need to talk to Roger um, four times during the during correct. the AF thing, or, or, or you know, yep. twelve times during the the, you the, know, the twenty-four hour, and then you can just get yeah you know, 93, 93, 93, and then you can work other people and well, you know, right. work them on six, work them on two, work yep. them on seventy. You know, so yeah, it, yeah. it's it's a bit of a strategy thing. Like I think sometimes people go, oh, you don't get many points for local contacts. But it's not about, you know, you just need to get lots of contacts. Correct. And, and, and they keep sort of adding up. So. And the key thing there is getting people involved. So hmm. it, it's that's, that's that's the key message, I think. So, so so how many contacts and how many points? I had 102 contacts. Okay. Uh, and I think it was 18,376 hmm. points. Okay. Cool. So... Nice. Yeah. I think there's... Someone in the north of the island who's about four points behind that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but look, it, it's... Um, and again, as we discussed earlier, it, it, the distance plays a part because yeah. where Peter was in a really good spot where he was able to work the guys, he was able to work us, and he was able to work the northwest guys. Yeah. So um, That's really good. Which is, which is really good. And, and there were northwest... The, the northwest, obviously a lot of amateurs in the northwest and the north who were... Participating, which that's is right. and that's, that's part of the issue. Yeah. And so. um, and look, it's it's all again VKC is so good at doing that. Yep. You just you know, don't have to do anything yourself. You just basically enter in the grid screen and it comes up. So oh wow, it's that many points. Cool. <laughs> and and that's a um uh, that's 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 my um my bad for the weekend was I got to Granton and realised that I'd left the, the uh, notebook in the shack. Um, right. So I thought, oh, okay, well, I do have my SOTA pack with me, which has got my SOTA log in it, so I just used a paper log. So, right. 
so I adapted uh, and uh, adapted to the situation uh, and uh, relied on those that were running VKCL to uh, tell me that they couldn't work me. Yeah. And oh, that's, <laughs> so that's why when we had those couple of oopses with the log, <laughs> ah, that, that that's drops. exactly what was going on. And um, you know, you only need to uh, need to forget to write down the band or something that, which of course it's is actually automatic. a really cool thing in VKCL when you go on there and you make your first couple of contacts and you go, oh, one moment they're not green. Yeah, <laughs> let me just edit those couple and make them FM and not SSP. Correct, correct, correct. correct. So and all the memories come flooding back. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. So um, that, but but I, I can I just say that was my only oops. Um, so, so that was good. Um, I did. I was visited, uh, visited on the day by a number of uh, lo- uh, new, new Norfolk uh, locals, who I, I think the word had got out that there was this crazy guy so, up, some weirdo up the hill. <laughs> with these big antennas, um, and uh, was visited by Sean actually, Sean oh, F-A- FAZD. So he came up and said hello and Excellent. Um, offered offered to go to banjos for me, which was fine because I'd already. <laughs> I had my thermos and a few other things with me, but nice. but um, um, yeah, it was it was it was good day. It was not bad at all. No, so. look, we 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 took we sort of had a few sort of cheese and bickies and some sort of coffee and stuff. It was all sort of pretty pretty well organised. Um, I love it. We had a visit from a VK one OM. Mm. His name I can't remember, but he <laughs> sort of tapped on the window and sort of said, "Oh, you know, VK one OM." Oh, okay. He goes, "I know what you guys are up to." <laughs> Great. And you're so crazy, had, crazy. Um, <laughs> crazy. But, uh, the, the transfers that we've got that are on the side of van, yes. we've actually got a, a QR code which takes you off to, love to pay the site. And we saw a lot of people stop and take photos. So I don't know whether they ended up scanning the QR code. Hey, I hope not, they did. But, um, I hope they did. But, um, look what these crazy guys do. <laughs> we didn't probably look quite as crazy as what Hayden and I did when we were actually outside. Yeah, um, and it certainly didn't look like you were you were red nosed like Hayden oh, in his video. No, when he's back in the car at the end of that video, going, <laughs> "Why am I doing probably this?" Probably really didn't sort of dress appropriately. <laughs> Just, you got to you got to sort of work on the assumption it's going to be damn cold. Uh, and even if it's not damn cold now, it will be damn cold at some point during the day. Yeah, yeah. My goodness, my goodness. But um, no, look, it was a real good day, and and I got to say that it was really good to hear. The new guys, uh, who, on, who are who next are door, who are next hey door. Hello, Xavier and and Harry. But um, but they were they were on and they had a bit of a crack and um, Spot on. they were into the swing of it. Sort of by the end of it, we could hear them calling yep. people that popped up in the log that you know were due to work and stuff, which is which is it's really excellent. good. excellent, really good. Um, and uh, Lee came on. Lee yep. came up and spent yes, a bit of time and, and he's we, out there as well. So, um, three cheers for Lee and uh, and Anthony as well. It was good to hear him out in the crowd. Uh, Lots of guys were out. Um, Warren was out. He was on North uh, Bruny and well and truly. So um, it was an excellent signal from North Bruny actually on uh, two seventy and six. Well, it's based so. on where you were. Uh, well and truly, oh. it's fantastic. Radio, I had you work that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, can I can I just say Warren's probably one of the only ones who was good signal <laughs> in the, into New Norfolk. But uh, anyway, I'm I'm not sure I'm going to be going back to that particular location. Yeah. But it was hey, good for a test. Good yeah, for that's a right. test. No, that's right. No, that's it was it was okay to the north because I did make contact with with Peter and Andrew. Yep. I, I did make two meter contacts with Peter and Andrew. So so that uh, which got a reasonable amount of points. So. So yeah, probably the only the only little tricky thing is because we use channel fifty, yeah, which is which is obviously a good channel to use. If you're in a position like Mount Wellington, the good thing and the bad thing is is that you've got a good location. You hear. So yeah. you're trying to sort of work the guys in Launceston and the guys in Hobart can't hear, so they just call. No, and you're like uh, and vice versa, and it's it's one of those things, and I'm not really quite sure. You, know, you don't really want to be no, no. splitting people off into different channels because then people miss each other and it all sort of goes a bit pear shaped. Well, if you because it's a call channel, um, theoretically, what you should be doing is calling and then going to another frequency. Yeah. So that that's that's what um, that's that's the that's the actual thing you should be doing. Well, and I know a couple of times I called into you and you just said, "Can you hang on? Stand by." Yeah. So, I, which I obviously wasn't hearing. Yeah other people on that channel so. I think that was what we sort of t- I sort of tried to, to, to get across was like just hang on there's, there's yeah. we're working someone up north and you're and not and hearing them yeah. 
and that's and that's like, and most I, people are reasonably sort of correct. happy that if you know like oh gee sorry I didn't mean to yeah, you know, no, sort no. of talk over someone so so I oh, know good stuff all right um thank you Richard thank that you is Justin. excellent now stick around stick around because um what we have here is um what I can do here is oh, oh, yes. now uh. Going on here. Oh, there we go. There we go. You're yeah. right. There we go. Uh... Oh, that's better. <laughs> now, um, the ISS, uh, which was celebrating the ISS, Mia, and um, the shuttle uh, from the Russian uh, module, uh, it was transmitting for about five days mm. um, 12 postcards. <laughs> now, I'll just say. I got every postcard except number one and number twelve. <laughs> and I think that was purely because of where we were. Because they were... I, I'm, I'm not sure it was random. Um, it was, I think it's a 50% duty cycle. I think it transits for two minutes and then I think it rests for two minutes. And, and so, on a, on a pass, if you've got the timing right, you can almost get three. Yeah. Almost. But most of the time, you normally sort of get well <laughs> one good one and <laughs> the end of one tail and then the stuff. Here's a good example of it disappearing halfway through, <laughs> over the horizon, which is that 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 middle. Um, so uh, now I'm going the wrong way. Let's go this way. Uh, no. Oh no. Oh, that's what I want to go to. Like, oh, here we go. Uh, that's number two, is it? Or? That's number eight. Okay. Uh, eight of twelve. So that's not bad. There was a little bit in the middle there that was a bit dodgy. Um, another one of eight. Uh, perfect one. Uh, that's Owen Garriott, who was the. It's the very first uh, space tourist, yep. uh, if you remember. Um, STS nine. So that's the shuttle. Uh, yep. um, another one, which is a really good one. That's seven of twelve. That one. That particular one. Uh, Eleven of twelve. Uh, so that's Mike Hopkins uh, using Ham TV. So that was that was that's on the ISS. Um, uh, another one, eleven of twelve, um, ten of twelve. So again, that's uh, Richard Garriott. So that's Owen's son, oh, wow. <laughs> who was the second space traveller. Uh, number ten of twelve. Uh, number nine of twelve, which we saw earlier, but you can see that started part way through. Now, Doug Wheelock, um, I made a comment on Facebook. This is number four of twelve. Doug was the one who spoke to the students at the uh, South Hobart school, Primary School. You were there, yep. So, um, so that that was a little bit of a special one to receive, and that that's a perfect. That's that's a perfect that receive. Really good. Um, uh, Chris Hadfield, so Canada's Hadfield. Uh, this was in the uh, the uh, um, that's in the ISS, I think. Chris Hadfield, I think, also did a stint in Mia, I think, after Andy Thomas. Now, so so this is the slant is off, but it was just that was at the end, I think. Must have been of, either at the end or, or a really low pass with what yeah. the ground noise. Uh, another one of Doug. Um, oh, keep going. Come on. Um, uh, you, there's another one, uh, and I think I've got a better one of that. Uh, it's like that fading when you're sort of going across uh, the lobes of the antenna, or well, it's or, a, or I, just I'm, a fade. It's just a fade, well and truly. Um, that's uh, that's in Columbus, actually. That's so that's um, the Columbus module, uh, and that's that's uh, Shoji Naguki. Who was he's? Uh, I think he was the first Japanese astronaut. I think uh -huh. from memory. Uh, that's number six of twelve. Um, uh, keep going, keep going. Oh, there's another one of eight. The Russian guy. There's another one of Owen. Uh, another one at the end of a pass. Uh, Richard again. <laughs> and I'm hanging out for one and twelve, and uh -huh. not just. Uh, now, Sergei Akiliakov, um, that was uh, Mia and the ISS. So that was um, uh, ISS Expedition Number One was the first 
expedition to the ISS that actually had uh, Russian cosmonauts on it. Oh, wow, okay. Um, oh, another one at the end of a pass. <laughs> Doug. Uh, Chris Hadfield, that was a good one of Chris. Uh, Owens. Anyway, it's, it's all the way through. Um, now... Okay, there are oh, that a few. One came down really well. There... <laughs> oh yeah, it's a complete certificate. Yeah. Um, so this is um, this is the Indonesian space explorer, SSTV diploma. Now, can I just say this is the platinum three? <laughs> so that's three uh, perfect decodes. So that's okay. three that are really good. So you upload the three of them, they check them, and then you get this... That one that had to have the, the time and date stamp on well, each Well, truly, as, yeah. part the, the, um, as part of the as file the, as the name. picture, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but anyway, that's the Indonesian. And also, another one that... Uh, no, is this it? Oh, this is it. So, that was the Indonesian certificate. If you go to the ARIS website... Uh, and you um, now the the key thing about the ARIS website is uh, there is also an area where um, amateurs have been uploading their images anyway, so they they go off and they check that you've uploaded some some images which are the current uh, expedition, and you end up with this very nice uh, very nice certificate, the ARIS SSTV award which is in English and Russian, um, if you read Russian. So I'll give it to Alan out there in uh, KOJ, uh, and he can read it. But uh, anyway, um, that's a crappy image, but anyway, um, the certificate's nice. Um, that's the other image. Um, and the other one that I've got is the Argentinian. <laughs> now, the Argentinian one's a little bit harder to get, um, but I think I've uh, met all of the requirements. So. If that comes through sometime, uh, I'll I'll show uh, I'll show that as well. So uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's Mia. Uh, it's the shuttle and the ISS. That was the celebration that was uh, just recently. So um, that was pretty cool. Uh, well, Unfortunately, I was away. I would like to have no. participated in that. But that's and I know you do. So and I realised that you were you were off on off on islands eating eating cheese and stuff. Yeah. King Island. King Island. No, yes. King Island. <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> so um, that's um, now. Can I just get you to grab those two linear actuators there? We've got um, our last week. We had um, we had our dumpster dive. <laughs> we had our dumpster dive. Um, uh, um, uh, drip, drip uh, motors that we have extracted a whole lot of usable bits and pieces from. Another bit of um, dumpster diving, which I uh, showed, I think I showed that one uh, a couple of weeks ago. And the key thing with it was linear actuator um, that comes from uh, one of those uh, chairs, those comfy chairs that oh, enable, right. that sort of stand up St chairs. Sort of stand you up. Stand you up. Yep that are used in hospitals. There were a couple of those in the dumpster and I had a bit of a look at how these were connected to the actual chairs and they are just held in with two uh, pins uh, that had little spring washers on them. So I took the spring washers off and... Oh, little eye clips or something. Well and truly. And surprise, surprise, uh, the linear actuators come out. Then there was a bit of an issue from the linear actuator point of view because... Um, it, the control of them comes out to a very nice little uh, five pin DIN plug <laughs> and when I started to, I could work out what the, uh, the power and uh, the ground were for the, um, uh, on the connectors here but uh, then I, I couldn't work out how you actually controlled them and I couldn't find, I actually couldn't find anything on the net either uh, although they did have this type of model but they didn't have any information about how to control them so, anyway, another chair appeared in the dumpster. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> and so I had a very... Some guy took the last one quick. <laughs> and so I grabbed, grabbed the linear actuator and 
grabbed the controller <laughs> that goes with the linear actuator, which happened to still be on the chair, which wasn't on the original uh, chair okay. that I had there. You better go back to the bin. Uh, well, <laughs> I did actually, <laughs> but couldn't find it, but have, have grabbed this one. I've taken it apart because it, it, it's it's got two big arrows on it normally that you, you but there's two micro switches in here and when I it's got an awful lot of electronics on the bottom it's of really here. Complex for up and down. Well, I think that's actually for another function because if you trace out the circuit, all the micro switch does is switch the voltage that's coming in through here, which is what's powering the uh, linear actuator comes into this controller and all that's all that these switches are doing is switching it back out to two of the other lines <laughs> so so all of this electronics i think is for some other function that this particular controller and it and it may be for another type of chair yeah another feature another feature because it does have a yeah, yeah. And it, and it does have a um, there's a clock, uh, a uh, data, and um, and some voltage and ground pins on there as well. Some sort of bus, like a like well a and truly. Bus that we and it and it does have a USB on the end. Now USB, I yeah. I have a feeling that the USB may be just to power to get power off of here, because um, there's a little regulator on here that gives you the five volts. But when I actually um, looked at what the circuit was uh, it's actually no all of this electronics is something else um, so uh, so anyway we now have the pin out for the control of the linear actuator nice. and both of them work perfectly oh cool they, they're 12 volt uh, they they're actually 24 volt okay. but they will run off 12 yeah, volt yeah, yeah. they'll certainly run off 12 most volts. of the, the, the satellite ones are 36 but they'll quite happily run well and well, true in fact my, my number big dish is running at 12 so so, so the 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 stroke on this so the amount of travel that they've got is 207 millimeters and the speed at, and this will be speed at 24 volts is five millimeters per second so um, and the the at, <laughs> outputs 50 watts and the maximum is 6,000 newtons yeah so it can actually move a fair bit <laughs> um, so um, and provides you with a fair bit of force. Um, then I think those big, those one meter ones that, that Rex told me to play with. I yep. think they were eight or nine thousand newton meters, like a yeah, well and truly forty mil diameter. Like don't get stuck in between them. So um, linear actuators um, can be used on uh, dish and dish control, uh, and the price is uh, right. <laughs> Optimum. <laughs> so, um, so that was that was another of our uh, dumpster dive um, uh, finds, and I'll I will keep my eye on uh, the other dumpsters that appear in the uh, in the hospital. So, <laughs> you can even get a reputation, just okay. Oh no, I've already got a reputation oh, okay. there. I can guarantee the security guards at the uh, at the hospital are going on oh, us. That guy again. Um. <laughs> <laughs> now, cool. Um, I don't think Larry's here tonight. However, one of the things Larry left, um, Larry is um, uh, used to run a honey business, and came up with and by all means stick around, Richard. Okay. This this little thing, little plastic arrangement, called a brood brood minder, which is um, the uh, the brand, has a little bit of electronics down here, which is. One of these now. If we, if we go to, okay, I'll go to. Where's yeah? Mm. There. No, no. If you can, you hold that, and I'll actually zoom right in. Up, 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 up. There we go. That's the little bit of electronics that's in the end of it. So there's a three volt lithium uh, cell in there. There is, uh, I think it's either a 2.4 gig or a 900 meg Bluetooth module on there as well. I, and um, what it does with inside uh, this little thing, um, just move that way, <laughs> inside that little thing, uh, is measure the temperature and the humidity in the hive. Oh, wow. And you can walk up to a hive and that little thing on your phone, the little app on your phone, 
can tell you what the temperature and the humidity within the hive is. That's awfully good. So, um, so that's pretty impressive. And these are these are made to be, I assume, sort of semi um, semi disposable. I, mm. I su su suspect. Now, I'm glad you picked that up, Richard. I'm glad you picked that up because this is actually a very similar little module. However, it's connected to some pressure cells. Ooh. <laughs> this goes underneath the hive. Ah, weighs it. It weighs it. So there oh. is, you can see there's a little bit of electronics in here in the center. Yep. And there's two little pressure cells at each end, which are connected to, there, there are little um, pressure points here oh, and here yeah. that sit there. And I don't, I suspect it goes that way. Yep. Um, and so the hive sits on there. You can walk up to it and measure uh, when you put the hive in. You can obviously measure what the 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 uh, the initial weight is. And set it to zero, and then look at and increase. come back. And you find as they fill um, fill the uh, the cells with honey, um, of course it gets heavier and heavier and heavier until it gets to a point where I assume you go, okay, um, there's enough honey. There's enough honey. Yeah. We'll we'll actually harvest the honey, and uh, reset reset the weight and bingo. And it's, it's all done with, um, if we go to, go back to and find, ah, there we go. Now just move to, there we go. And there's the electronics, which looks very similar to this electronics, um, with a little three volt cell in there um, and the uh, the transmitter. Uh, and it goes to, um, it's got names on it. the, uh, yeah, Dwayne, Theo, Rich. <laughs> Uh, and there's the there's the pressure cell at the end um, that it would be. Oh, uh, a little locating key on the end here. Yeah. And th it is just literally a piece of bent uh, steel uh, that goes go slots into uh, into that uh, that slot. We'll just pan. Oh, panning. Panning. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> Very impressive. Icons, not to scale. scale. <laughs> okay. So, there you go. Um, so thank you to uh, Larry VK Seven WLH who who bought that in um, just to show us there there is an awful lot and and this is this is um, a a small part of the electronics yeah. that, that go into um, into making honey and all sorts of stuff so uh, um, so the other part of this uh, that Larry left with us was. Um, many many RFID tags and what I might do is given we're at 820 there is a whole bag of different HID um, RF tags in every way shape or form in this in this bag so I might what I'll do is I'll leave this until next week when we've got the close-up camera uh, and we can lay these out but there are every different form there's big plastic ones there's little stick-on ones there's there's RFID ones, there is all sorts of ones, little screw-in ones, uh, say UHF on top of them, so some of them are 900 megs, some of them are UHF, some of them are all sorts of things. So, okay. so um, Larry left them and we'll have a look at them, uh, we'll have a look at them next week. So, uh, so there you go. Now, um, I also, um, I was going... <laughs> I was going to do a um, a review of the latest AR magazine, uh, which has a very impressive, uh, very impressive photo on the front um, <laughs> of um, the the Air Force. Um, oh, hang on, let me. That's a bit better. Uh, the 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 special event call sign VI one hundred AF, which was the one hundredth anniversary of the Air Force. Um, with the um, the star lifter in the in the the C seventeen in the background, um, very impressive. And uh, I understand that guy there is actually a um, an amateur. Uh, so uh, in the uh, in the air force, so uh, we'll do that uh, that review because we'll have our close up camera back then. Uh, we'll do the review of that magazine uh, next um, next week. So uh, there you go. Um, <laughs> Well, also uh, next week. Now, uh, can I just remind people next week? Yes, it is the first Wednesday night of the week. 
Um, but it is an ATV night because our presentation night is actually on the second Wednesday night on the 14th and that will be the uh, the tour of uh, Tas Maritime Radio. So a bit of a presentation by Barry McCann and then a tour of Tas Maritime Radio. Um, our August presentation night is focus on contesting. Yeah. And one of the presenters is sitting next to me. Um, <laughs> um, Richard, who will be taking us through uh, VHF and above contesting, and Martin uh, Martin Luther VK Seven GN will be taking us through HF contesting. So uh, he's a bit of bit of a red hot keen uh, contester. He is a red hot. <laughs> Well and truly. <laughs> so, um, and this is all in preparation for the Remembrance Day contest on the 14th and 15th of August. So, uh, we want a really, really good showing from VK7. Can't use the excuse that I didn't hear about it. Correct. <laughs> uh, because we're going to hammer it yeah. from now on. Um, and September uh, is the P25 Emergency Services Network uh, that I understand may or may not be going into Tasmania in the near future. Um, there is a bit of a talk on that um, by someone in the know. Uh, so, uh, so yes. Um, RF, uh, for our RF viewers, um, we've got spaceships capable of reaching our closest stars. So that's, that's a bit of an interesting little uh, expose. Uh, Ham Radio Basics. Now, this was sent to me by Eric, VK7EV from up at Olveston. Um, this is um, Jim Heath, who runs a very successful YouTube channel, a bit like Hayden. Um, uh, Jim Heath, who is W6LG, shares uh, a video of a Russian ham's uh, antenna farm. Oh, right. This is very impressive. Very, very impressive. Uh, wonderful little summary by Peter Parker, VK3YE, on the WIA AGM. Oh, and, and, <laughs> very humorous. Uh, take note of the, um, the chart that he's made up. Yeah. It's very good. Um, and then uh, one from Vertassium, which is... Um, I don't know whether how many people realise the guy that runs Vertassium, the YouTube channel, is actually Australian. He's Derek Muller. Okay. Um, and uh, the one he's doing today is mathematics has a fatal flaw. Oh so, and and it's a bit of a mind bender this one. So uh, so that's our uh, our videos for uh, our RF viewers after our our streaming. So we'll uh, say farewell and seventy three, and we'll catch you next time. So thank you, Richard, for thank you, coming Justin. in. Um, and um, good luck with your presentation in the uh, in August. Um, and also good luck uh, for the VHF UHF field day. Yeah, hopefully as long as everybody that's was in it, make sure they put their login, and it's dead easy in VKCL. Correct. Which is why I then put it in VKCL yeah. and then sent it off. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> Peter did the same. Um, but if anybody has any trouble with VKCL, contact someone. Yeah, me or somebody, and we'll help you out if that's what it takes to yeah, get the yeah, login. That's correct, <laughs> correct. Just get your login. Yeah. Um, please, please, please get your login. Um, so that's our uh, program for tonight, uh, and it's end of financial year today. So uh, we'll. If you can uh, write radio equipment off on your tax, go right ahead. Uh, right. Now? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got long. Uh, um, so, uh, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> That's a very good point, Richard. Um, yeah, I yeah, should have that. thought of that earlier. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, this is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV Experimenters Night, and we'll catch you next week. 73. 73.